Welcome to Audio Talk. Hi there, audio enthusiast, and welcome to Audio Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today's topic is the Pizzo Tweeter. So you're probably like, hey, you're just greeting audio enthusiast, and here you are with a pizza driver famous for its harshness, drill bit to the ear, dissonant. Yeah, but it's fun. It's really fun because it's super cheap and you don't have to do a crossover. So a great place to start if you're building speakers and, or you want to create a boom box, something that just plays loud. These are really fun. And if you burn one off, you know, I mean, if you kill it with the party, you know, it's like really, really cheap. So, and there's things you could do in order to make it sound better. And we're gonna get into that in this video, those things that you can do. Still, I'm kind of like, I mean, a lot of them make sense. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, but, the, but to start to take it apart and give it uh, tomorrow, uh, varnish which is one thing I mean you could take this apart and this membrane in here you can you can give that a little coat and do all kinds of stuff give some resonance killer you know on the body and hey the dome tweeter is still gonna murder this thing in sound quality so eh, you know it's like tuning a geo metro um, at some point it's just silly if you ask me but they can sound a lot better and we'll get into that. And I'll try to not rip too hard into this drill bit of the air canal. So the way this thing works is a material that flexes once you apply electricity to it. So if you can take these apart and you have like a a very kind of traditional basically looking membrane and it is that's a paper membrane but behind that is like kind of a disc looking thing and that's the uh, piezoelectric element so this material is flexing with the electricity coming in and the how it was discovered is actually the other way around is that they were messing around with it and flexing it like Boop, 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 boop. and then it was producing electricity and it's then works the other way around it's like you apply electricity to it and it moves you also find these for like um you know for buck uh, repellent uh, <laughs> so it doesn't only repel people it also repels the bugs uh, and um, and alarm buzzers and that sort of thing very die hard and simple to use. Again, it doesn't need a crossover. You can just connect it directly to your amplification and also your woofer. It doesn't have a problem with high tones. So you can really just cut out the entire thing that's the crossover when you have this kind of tweeter. But it will sound a lot better if you gave it a crossover. And it could be a very simple one so these pizza tweeters here, like something like this one, like when you have this size, not a huge horn on it and stuff like that, the response is typically down to somewhere between 3000 and 6000 Hertz. If you want to make sure that it has the optimal sound, you have a, something of this size, I will stick to thinking that it's about five to 6000. And so you can create a very simple, simple um, crossover basically to prevent it from playing the lower tones. And how you would do that is for example, by taking a 22 ohm resistor and mount that between plus and minus, like right there, right across there. And then you take a 1.2, to 1.5 um, uh, capacitor and put it in series. And it doesn't matter which one you connect to, just if it's one of them. Like that, 
doesn't matter when it's in series. And that will create what's called a first order filter that will take away some of these lower tones that will make this sound significantly better. If you don't mind the harshness and might even invite it in for extra grit, there is one thing. If you have an amplifier that goes beyond 20 kilohertz in response, I will recommend that you still take some crossover components into the mix. What I would recommend is that you take a 50 ohm resistor on each one and place it in series, like on one of them, just like the, the capacitor was connected before, nothing across here. What that would do is that it will create some filtering of the ultra, ultra, ultrasonic sound is what they call. The sounds beyond your hearing, or the human hearing, is called ultrasonic, and it would remove, filter that range away where that this thing would have a terrible play together with the amplifier. So I really recommend doing that. If you're looking to replace your current tweeter that just went dead in the last party and you want to replace it with one of these cheap piece of tweeters, what you have to do if that tweeter was like a dome tweeter or horn or something is you figure out what is its impedance, its resistance. And that could be mentioned on the back. I mean, it could be written with an ohm sign and then saying, oh, eight ohm, four ohm, six ohm. Or you could take a multimeter and measure how many ohms is there through this uh, old tweeter. And then you pick a resistor. You take a ceramic resistor of the same size as that number you place that across plus and minus of the pizza tweeter. Now, the crossover in your current speaker is going to see the load exactly like it did before on your old tweeter. And now it would work like it's supposed to. Reducing the amount of power to a P2 tweeter. If it's playing too loud in your speaker and you want to lower the amount of output, there's ways to do that as well. So for most of them, if you, the most simple thing to do would be to place a capacitor in series with it. Like or just on either plus or minus, doesn't matter. And the size that you most likely will have um, good luck with will be something around 0.1 microfarad. So a really little guy. If you are using a bigger horn that goes down to like two kilohertz, the bigger horns, you, you're looking for a bigger size of a capacitor and you likely need something more in the range of like 0.3 microfarad instead. Another way to reduce the output on a pizza tweeter is to create a voltage divider to it. So if you take two resistors, let's take two of equal size, like 222 um, ohms in series, and you connect the tweeters from the crossover or directly from the amplification to each side of this connection. Then you connect the tweeter to the middle and to either this side or this side. Doesn't matter. What would happen is these are two equal sizes is that the voltage would divide over each one of these, the total voltage. So you slice the voltage in half by using the middle leg and the outside leg going to that piece of tweeter. That's one way to reduce it as well. So you've probably seen these pizza tweeters here in, in speakers uh, in an array where you have like several of them side by side and 
you also see but rarely in what's called a line array like on top of one another so let's talk about that a little bit about dispersion this is something that applies to any driver when you do this to them and that is because of what's called negative and positive interference is that it becomes more directional when you have many side by side very directional so if you are putting them side by side like this this way you will have a great dis dispersion this like horizontally you'll have a wide just just as wide as you had before and even better you'll have more strength further away like an angle of uh, dispersion will be even better but sideways it becomes very narrow so it, because of this negative interference it will become very directional and so acoustically in you in that line of fire these will help each other even more so putting them vertically like this under each other would do the opposite it would give you good dispersion sideways and then in that box you can say of of how many of them you have that's where you're going to have the sound so it's going to drop off a cliff in 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 sound when you get outside of the area where that's pointing so it's very important that if you do a line array like that that it's in the head height of your audience if you're a DJ or a musician or even for yourself at home make sure that is where your head is connecting these also matters a lot to how they're gonna interact so there's these two ways to go either what's called sensitivity or power all right so if you connect in parallel that means that if you take all the minuses boom 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 and connect them to each other and to your crossover or to amplifier uh, amplifier and do the same for the other leg for the say plus boom 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 that's called parallel connection out there boom 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 so with two you raise it 3 dB with four 6 dB with eight 9 dB so that's sensitivity is what it's called that's like how much you convert one watt into how much sound power the other way is to connect wire from power uh, wire from your amplifier in on this guy and then down to plus uh, you know from your minus to plus minus to plus minus to plus so that they go through like a train the power goes through like a train down uh, through them all so as opposed to the parallel connection this is called a serious connection this is going to raise the amount of power you can give the circuit because you're going to divide the voltage over each one of all these uh, uh, tweeters so now all of a sudden you have something that can take a lot more heat but you didn't have the increase in sensitivity you would still have increased sensitivity of the amount of tweeters on the front but it would be much less so than if you are parallel connecting them all i think that's as much as i can brew on these pizza electric tweeters here is a can from audio talk thank you so much for getting through this whole video and it would really help me if you'll subscribe a thumbs up something like that comment below have any questions fire away and until next time please enjoy the music bye